Yeah, it's episode two of Novid 19, and this time it's what's in the bag. Yeah, I'm asked a number of times over the last couple of months uh, what is in my bag and uh, I always find it an interesting video because uh, it really doesn't have any bearing on anybody else's but I think uh, as we are struggling for content right now then uh, why not let's have a look through what exactly I am gaming on a regular basis. A uh, couple of things to mention just before I go into the details of that. What you see in my bag is quite often, it does change quite often. It changes quite often because I'll often carry a product uh, in the bag for a number of weeks after I've carried it, after I've done initial testing. Uh, one thing that's in here right now is a putter that is different to what I would call a putter I game. Um, and the reason for that is I found it quite interesting in the testing. So I'll carry on putting it in the bag. I've got an inquisitive mind in that sense. And I like to see how this thing continues to perform. And uh, whether I ever then make a change, uh, we'll wait and see. Uh, second thing, I get access to a lot of golf product. I'm not suggesting anybody would go out and buy products as frequently and as often as this bag is possibly changed. I'm not necessarily someone who changes quite frequently, but it is worth pointing out that uh, I do get access to all this product. So for me, it's very easy to change a product out and the financial aspect is not something that I have to consider. So for me, I think that's worth saying, would I have changed my, or did I change my bag as frequently as, uh, as, as I do now before I did YouTube? The answer is no. So it's quite simple. And, I, and the, the probably third and final one, this is my bag. It's got nothing to do with anybody else. It's not a suggestion in any way. It's just purely what I game. And I'll try and explain the reasons as to why I choose to game these products. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's start off, let's get into the putter. The putter is one where at the moment, if you watch the recent videos, the sort of travel series, the road trip videos, and I hope you're all watching and enjoying them, please, please, I've lots of effort gone into them, so I, I do hope you're watching them and enjoying them. Um, in those videos, you'll, you'll have seen that I've been using a putter, um, and I've been using a tailor-made truss putter. Um, and it goes back to what I said in the earlier introduction is that I found the truss putter really interesting. I know it got a lot of stick and I know the video that I did again got a lot of stick in terms of there was a lot of question marks over once again the sort of marketing hype and I always understand all that but for me the center shafted truss putter in particular the one I carried on sort of trying and have been for several weeks I just couldn't I'll tell you what happened was I started I, I did the putting video and I thought, I quite like this. And then I, I did another video where I kind of, a week later, and sort of looked at it a little bit more extensively. And again, I thought, I still like this. And I carried on putting well with it. And it was something that, one of those things, putter is all about confidence. And I think it's all about the mindset and mentality. I think that's a big part in putting. We all know, again, you know, you've got to read the line. You've got to understand pace. There are lots of things go into holding a putt. But what the trust putter did for me is it was very consistent off the club face. It soon pointed out to me that, again, and I said in the initial video, that um, most golfers uh, sort of hit towards the toe end, centre to toe, in terms of where their strike point is on a putter. And it highlighted for me very soon that, yeah, that's something I did uh, quite often. So in address that, I was able to sort of recognise that in sort of the address position, and I felt as though I was actually lining the ball up a little bit better in terms of centre of the club. But it was very consistent off the club face, I was able to pick a line and that was a simple, they're the simple um, parts, I suppose, of uh, why you like or, or don't like a putter. It's using my putting style. And at the moment, I've carried on using it. My putter of choice and the one I have gained for uh, the last six months of the year was the uh, PXG Gunboat Putter. And again, I've just had that putter out, actually. I think a lot of things are, for me, when you choose any product, there's a number of different things that come into that equation um, and looks is a big deal feel is a big deal in terms of the putter as you got fit for this putter as well so the type of putter is it's very heavy in its weight it's very much a straight back and straight through type of uh, mallet style putter there's a thick very thick and bold white top line which i think is fantastic at address so for me it kind of like it ticked all the boxes once again didn't do dozen old putts for you uh, but I very much like the heavier weight putter. So in terms of what's in the bag, I think it will still be the PXG putter, although I've had plenty of fun testing out the truss putter 
in uh, in the last few weeks and i'll see how long that continues anyway that's that one on to wedges uh wedges is very simple i went on and did some videos a lot of the stuff i will say that is that what i've tested and my opinions within the testing has ended up in the bag so there shouldn't be any great contradictions in this stuff where i've had to sort of go back on stuff i've got cbx2 wedges now for me cleveland produced i first did cbx1 wedges in terms of review and i was kind of like very much an advocate of a lot of average golfers would benefit from having this sort of wide sole plenty of bounce on the wedges and uh, it's it's very much i would call it almost like if you put it in a category it'd be a game improvement type wedge a lot of people would sort of look at them and maybe see them as being a little bit bulky if you compared that to, to a sort of Voki, a blade style Voki or a, a tailor-made uh, mg2 them kind of things all great wedges but for me my short game has always been something that i suppose first of all i've never really practiced a great deal but it, it would be a, 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 an area where I needed to improve. And I think however it's happened, however it's done, my short game has improved significantly since using the CBX wedges. And that again could just be like the putter, it could just be just a confidence thing. But I love that bounce on the, uh, on the, on the, so the, and the, the width of the sole. I feel as like I'm very aggressive on shots and it's hard to dig in. So it maybe again just builds confidence which then means a more positive strike which then produces an all-round better result but i think they're fantastic i think they've got great feel but i think for me for average golfers it is a no-brainer in terms of a wedge i think that more and more people should be giving them a go and try them. And i know lots of you have from the initial videos that we did and are sticking them in the bag so that's that um i'm going to I, i'll tell you what i also talk about what's in my bag right now and i don't carry a great deal of clubs uh, so in terms of wedges, all I've got in there is a 54 wedge. I've got the 58 as well, but I don't really carry it. In terms of irons, I'll tell you what's in here now, shall I? Um, in terms of the numbers of irons, I've got a pitching wedge. I've got a 9, an 8, a 6, a 5, and a 3. Uh, I don't know how many that equates to, but I'm kind of like, I, I love, and always have been, again, somebody who prefers to have... Uh, just a few clubs in the bag. I could almost carry a half set. I, I love the idea of playing sort of half shots and not full on. Um, I, I've, I've, I, I'm not a great lover of this, uh, having a wedge for every yardage. You know, it's something that I've much preferred it when I had half a set when I was younger. And it was all about feel and it was all about control. And it was all about different type and style of shots. And, you know, sometimes I ain't good enough possibly to do that at times, but it's the bit that I really love about the game. I like to try to do those shots. And then when you execute one, it's a real good feeling. I like that. So, uh, so yeah, I haven't got even what you class as a full set in the bag. But I'll go to the top end first of all, and the driver. And this is something that I was asked in recent days, is that for a long time, I was G400 Max um, was the driver of choice. And I think in terms of full length shaft, traditional driver, then for me, the G400 Max would still be in the bag to this day before this change. I did change last year and I went to the TaylorMade Mini Driver. The reason I went to that was about control. Uh, I give up a little bit in terms of yardage, but the shorter shaft, I liked the sort of head size. It gave me a great deal of control. I was able to hit a certain type of shot confidently off the tee. So for me, um, I moved for, you know, dispersion, I suppose is the popular word that's used right now, and control. Uh, but in terms of the, the big stick, the, the proper driver, it was a G400 Max. And I have now changed that driver. And I've gone to, and this is a, maybe a slight contradiction. I've gone to the Callaway Maverick, but the Maverick Max. And when I first did the review uh, with the shaft that I had in, I was away somewhere abroad. And I, I commented that I couldn't do anything but hit it left. It was very much a bit of a closed, it was a draw bias driver. And um, I really struggled not to get the ball going down the left-hand side. So I was more inclined to go towards the, um, the standard driver. But then what happened was, and it was purely by chance, and I think this highlights for me, I know there's always an argument that sort of shaft doesn't matter. Um, and I've done that, the video in recent weeks about that. I'm a strong believer in the quite opposite to that, that shaft matters greatly. Um, because the change, what happened was, I put a shaft in, I play a lot of golf with... Uh, Lewis Johnson, uh, average golf pro you've seen on the channel plenty of times. And he uses an extra sh stiff shaft in, uh, I think he's using the M5 driver at the moment um, at TaylorMade. 
And I always pick up his driver and with the extra st stiff shaft when I first seen it, which I've never gone near before, I give it a bit of a go and I always hit his driver well. There's very little movement in the shots and it always it, it always performed well. And I think for me, I'm just glancing down because I'm just making sure that my battery's not running out there. It keeps flashing at me. I think for me, uh, it always left a question mark in my head. And a few weeks back, I was testing the, um, the Callaway Maverick driver, Max driver, and I put a shaft into the head by mistake and it turned out it was an Aldila extra stiff shaft um, and all of a sudden I started hitting the ball so consistently and then I realized that the shaft was different it did feel different and to this day I've played a lot of golf with a lot of people over the last four or five weeks um, and I think a lot of people have noticed I'm finding a lot of fairways with this driver now I just feel like with the way the setup is and with the extra stiff shaft, I can hit it as hard as I want. Um, I can be as aggressive as I want. I try and hit a sort of left to right cut and it's a draw bias driver. And it just seems to produce a great result for me. I'm hitting a very, if anything, just a slight cut with it. It's controllable and I'm finding fairways. And I can honestly say I've never found as many fairways with driver as what I have done in those recent in, in in these last few weeks since that's been in the bag honestly so it's been about and i haven't lost distance it's certainly uh, again uh, playing with likes of lewis and knowing where i am normally in line with him in terms of where the drivers have gone the drives the driver is performing well in terms of where, how far it's going but more importantly than that it's how uh, how much control i've got over it how consistent it is and i think that's the big noticeable deal for me and my and again, that feeds into confidence and then you question, well, is it the golf club or is it about the confidence that it breeds? I think the answer is it doesn't really matter. The point is that as a combination right now, it's working incredibly well. I love the ball flight. Uh, it does everything. I'm, I, I'm so pleased with that. It's a real like confidence booster for me and, and letting me at least have a go at trying to make a score. And then um, following on to that, I, I go to three wood. And I go to three wood um, with a sub-zero Maverick again, uh, but again with an Aldila stiff shaft. It's not an extra shift, uh, stiff shaft, Aldila stiff uh, in the Maverick. And again, um, for me, that is producing, again, I'm a sub-zero. I didn't really like any of the sub-zero, the low spinning drivers before. I always struggled with a number of things and ball flight being one of them. But for whatever reasons and this combination of shaft head combination, it really works well. I'm able to hit a mile off the tee and I'm able to pick it up off the fairways as well, really easy. And again, for me, if I went back to the initial testing, this is where testing has always got to be, you know, to do it for a longer length of time is always the, the, the real barometer of it, I think, is that when I did the Maverick, um, the Maverick Max, and I still think maybe the Maverick Max for the majority, I know a lot of players, a lot of better players as well, are playing a Maverick Max because it does get a very high ball fight. It's very easy to use. So I think that would still be possibly something that, uh, you know, there's fours and against. But for me, playing at Conway, this lower ball flight or slightly lower ball fight, but still being able to pick it up off the turf, long off the tee. And again, that confidence thing is massive in terms of control. So that's the, the club in the bag. And then I don't have anything else. There's no hybrids in there right now. There's no other fairway woods and... Uh, you're probably saying, and but you've done lots of videos at the minute where you've got seven woods, nine woods, and five woods, and all that. Yeah, and to be honest with you, I could easily stick all them in the bag. It, it, I could quite make an argument for all that. I go back to what I said. If I was carrying 14 clubs and I was pushing a trolley, then yeah, I'd probably fill it all with uh, and, and overcomplicate the game for myself by putting lots of different other options in. And it would include all those things as well. But for me, I love the simplicity of this bag. Um, and, and I love the few clubs and what I have to do to make that bag work as well. I think ultimately it makes me a better golfer for it. Finally, the irons. I've left the irons to last. And the irons is one that um, I think I've almost, you know, almost hide in the bag because I don't want to get any stick, to be quite honest with you. I suppose that's the, the, the honest answer. Uh, the, the irons are the PXG Gen 3s. And... Um, the first thing, the first comment I'm always hit with is that they're not irons for an, the average golfer. No, they're not. And when you start to talk about the price and affordability, it's ridiculous. I, I know all that. And I go back to the um, initial situation whereby, you know, I, I these clubs, I, I did a video when I come back um, that I posted when I've been over to PXG 
and this isn't a, a this is just to explain the situation justify it in some way um i did a video of which i was then contacted about and that from P by pxg absolutely loved the video and when i got back from arizona then i was delivered a set of pxg clubs so uh i'm not going to uh, dress it up in any other different way do i like the clubs i absolutely love the clubs um i go as far as to say and i, and I did it in the initial testing before i had them in the bag that people know I'm a fan of their product and that's where it always becomes difficult for me because I get accused of being biased and all the rest of it and I understand all that and trust me uh, I've been accused of being paid by them I've been that po uh, that positive towards the gear and trust me that does not happen but I understand again by the same token as to you know people see my positivity towards them and question it honestly I just love the clubs the looks thing again go back to the initial thing is that for a lot of people um, I think it's could be bordering on a marmite product a lot of people don't like them i particularly do i love the finish on these gen 3s the mill back on the on the uh, at the back of the club face is gorgeous to look at would mean a lot to many people but it does to me the shape and profile it's the p model by the way uh the top line is is chamfered off so it looks like quite small and tidy at a dress it's a fairly compact in terms of heel to toe it's massively forgiving across the center of that club face and it's it's a forged Iron, and again, I love the feel. I love the kind of that buttery soft feel that it's got, but it absolutely zips out the club face. I think anybody that I've played with, again, who's tried them, has been very complimentary towards them as well. I think for me, uh, in terms of what I've got, they're not all in the bag, but it's three iron down to wedge. Um, and again, the three iron is a bit contradictory in terms of what I've said in terms of seven iron, nine wood options. There's a lot easier options than hitting a three wood, uh, a three iron rather. Uh, but why have I got it in the bag? Well, because A, I can hit a three iron all right, to be fair. I'm not bad with the longer iron, so it's not something that I struggle with. But it's more about, I played at Dunbar, if anybody again watches those videos, and uh, during that 18 holes of golf, I hit a three iron into the wind uh, on a hole going out to the sea on a Lynx course. And it, it worked. I hit a good shot. It came out the middle. It was pure. I got it on the green. And honestly, for that 18 holes, the one thing I remember about it, apart from being Dunbar, was fantastic was that one three iron. And for me, yet yeah, maybe sort of five times out of 10, maybe three times, four times out of 10, I'll hit a good three iron. And I could really hit a, I don't know, a five wood, seven times out of 10 decent, six times out. So in terms of percentage play and why you should put your bag together, then it's probably not the right club to carry. But for me on a personal level, and that's what I, that's what I keep referencing, this is my bag, this is what I like. Hitting that one three iron at Dunbar through 18 holes, it was just pure and it gives me so much satisfaction. I love hitting again, I've said it before. My favourite part of hitting of golf is hitting a pure iron. It doesn't happen very often, but when you get it, I don't think there's any better feeling. That's what I like. Some people like bombing the driver. I just like hitting an iron. And if I can hit a three iron just every now and again, then I'll take it any day of the week. Right, and we still got, we've still got a little bit, this video has gone on a bit, I do apologise, I hope you're all still with me and not nodded off by now. Uh, the ball I'm gaming is the Seed still, it's the SD02 or SD01, I'll play any of them. Fantastic golf ball, I think it's been, um, again, they've done really, really well last year. They support the channel, so again, slightly biased in the opinion, but um, I think it's a fantastic ball, I've said it for long enough and I continue to use it. Uh, and again, what, the other thing I'd say is whenever I give people a go to try, I think they're really surprised at how good that ball performs. Some more testing coming and some group testing on that one coming further forward. Um, nice head cover off Glenn Muir, a nice head cover off BLK Douglas. The bag, again, a lot of people ask me about the bag. This bag was given to me by Royal Bled Golf Club, uh, which was incredibly generous of them. Uh, it came over in sort of November last year, and uh, it's just absolutely stunning. It is by Lynx and Kings. It is all sort of handmade, handcrafted. I absolutely adore it. It is really, it is so, so nice. And uh, what can I say? It just, I love it. I love my golf bag right now. Um, and like I said, um, golf bag, I mean, as in the setup, what I've got in there. Um, like I said, I think the only thing I need to reiterate before I get too much stick is the fact that, you know, it's that bag is put together because I've been able to put it together, um, not always at my expense, and I think that's the big deal. Um, but, you know, let, let's be realistic about that. Anyway, 
that is, I think, the end of Novid 19 episode two. I will, uh, like I said, carry on doing these videos. What I would ask, and it's a bit late in the day because I should have asked it at the beginning, but um, if you don't subscribe, please consider subscribing. It makes a massive difference to the channel. Also, hitting the like button is a massive deal. And just having your comments down below, um, preferably, you know, I mean, nice ones, but either way, stick your comments down below because uh, it is greatly appreciated. And uh, I think that's it. As ever, like I said, more importantly than any of this, any of that rubbish that's in there, is uh, do all the things we should be doing. Um, take care, stay safe, and uh, hopefully we'll be back out on the fairways uh, sooner rather than later. Right, see you soon.